Schulze to um, Schiffrin, or actually Schulze to Ms. Clark. Just a reminder, you should be at Dartmouth to cover that door. I'm going to turn off Milwaukee since our meeting is starting. And we'll figure it out. Okay, great. Um, who's is this? Otherwise, we can have you. I don't know. Okay, you guys have the same one? Um, then I'm going to ask if you don't give the last second. I just tried to put okay. it in. Why don't you look off of Karen's side? Okay. Um, good morning, guys. Good morning. We're going to go ahead and jump right in. I actually want to jump in um, with just a quick question so we can decide the best way to move forward. Uh, Meg was just talking to me a little bit about uh, phonics and making sure that phonics is clear, happening consistently um, as well. And it sounds like there are some like structural things that are getting in the way in terms of materials as well as just confusion around like what's the best way to internalize. My proposal is to use next Friday's, excuse me, next week's IPP meeting to dive into phonics and to talk about like what doesn't make sense, what does, what are we missing in order to get it up and running. But I want to quickly get a pulse check if we think that would be a good use of time to help out the phonics. So can I say like a yes or a no? The no would be like no. I want to keep working on. It's more important to me that we keep working on math rather than clarify phonics. So yes means yes. Let's use it. No means no. Yes? Yes? No. Okay, great. Sorry to hear that one. Um, so I will, uh, yeah, it's okay. so we will, I will make that adjustment. And um, ahead of that time, I want to save our time today, but ahead of that time, I'll probably just shoot you an email and asking, like, what are the issues that you see with phonics so that I can understand exactly how can I spend that time, how do we plan that time, what are the things that are missing, and what do we need to correct? Cool. All right, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. So um, today we're going to jump into lesson 16. However, I know there's been some confusion in the scope and sequence, so let's start there. So it sounds like we were just referencing two different folders, mm -hmm. as well as the scope and sequence, some of the numbers in the lessons not matching. So before we move any further, the lesson we're going to jump into is the one about the first game where they're subtracting on a number. Is that the one that everyone's looking at? Okay, great. Um, in the scope and sequence, that is that should be today's lesson. So, if you have all like essentially, this should be the lesson after kids have played the game where they drop the counters. This is tomorrow. Yeah, this is tomorrow's, this is tomorrow's lesson. lesson. What's the day? Oh, the day two of the of of the, the game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. This should be the one after that lesson. Yes. Okay. Then we should all be back on track. From so my goal is that today's Wednesday, tomorrow, everyone is teaching this lesson, regardless of where you were in the scope and sequence, so we can get back on it. So I prefer this for today, that's fine. That's fine, yeah, and then, then you're just ahead of the game. Um, okay, great. So. Yes, and I think, Ashley, we're all good with uh, deleting all of the error. Or the okay, I just like deleted the folder that had all of the other. Okay. I don't know if I guess. The reason I said no with the phonics is because you know to be well, we are going to internalize that too. It's just like as the camp, the timing is so different than this one, and that's why I was like, sure, yeah, yeah, like, yeah like, totally hear you. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and jump into this lesson. So uh, as we are, yeah, let's actually start by uh, thinking about how does this lesson relate to the last few. How does this, yeah, what, what, what's the connection between this lesson and the last few lessons that scholars have been doing? Um, Karen? Um, they've been exposed to the number line, um, but they haven't done subtraction. Yes, yeah, so we've done addition on the number line, but we haven't done subtraction. What strategies have they used for subtraction so far? Um, Great. If we take a look at the standard, let's remember that this is the biggest standard, this is our big standard for the for grade two, unit two, from our unpacking, um, which is all about fluently adding and subtracting within 100. Uh, does anyone remember which uh, which building block we are in in this part of the um, Is it something around like really consistent understanding the fluency of the parts of the whole? Yes, so that so remember that building block two and building block three are very similar, except building block two is all about using strategies that make sense and are efficient for addition. Building block three is all about using strategies in addition, or excuse me, strategies that are efficient for subtraction. So we've, we've talked about addition and some of the strategies we use. We're now shifting over to subtraction. Again, by the end of the unit, our goal is that we're doing all of these things fluently and in the strategies that make sense. Okay. 
Um, so now let's take a look at our big idea for the lesson. So I'm gonna actually just have each person share out what their big idea for this lesson is. Let's talk about the areas where it's the same, talk about where there's any areas that we might need to adjust. Uh, Katrina, why don't you start us off? Um, so the big idea I said was that they can use the number <coughs> line to either start at the hole and go back or start at a part and go up. Okay. Yeah, using multiple lays to track the number line. Great, so I heard a lot of different things, which I think let's tie them all together. So I heard that we're using strategies that make no sense to us, which is absolutely correct. I heard we have three different strategies on number lines that scholars can use. And then I think to Marina's point, thinking specifically about the focus of this lesson. In this lesson, in all of the work that scholars have, they're missing a part and yeah, they're missing a part, right? So there's no there's no work today where they're missing a hole. They're only working on I've given the hole and I'm missing a part to find the other part. So important to know that those are three strategies that we're talking about for that specific instance. So let's talk a little bit about the strategies. I'm just gonna quickly recall what are the three strategies that scholars can use to find the missing part on the middle line. Karen, what's one? Um hole and subtract the part that you know. Got it. So start at the hole, subtract the part that you know. What's another one there? Um, they can start at the part and make jumps to the hole and then count those jumps. Start at the part, yeah, make jumps to the hole and then count the jumps to find the missing part. And then the remainder will be the last one. They can start at the hole and jump back the part you know. Not jump back the part you know, jump back. Oh, jump. oh sorry, I was like, yeah, you're right. It's, sure these are very similar. That's what I want to get at. Jump back to the part you know to find them on the field. Good. And, and, and yes, so, you, so jump back the part, jump back to the part. Yeah, so a lot of different things. Let's just take a minute to remember again, we've had this discussion in our unit on time. Let's just talk, why do those three different strategies work? Why do all three of those different strategies work? All right, talk to your partner. Yeah, that's good. Um, okay, let's go ahead and come back. I heard Meg, you share something, why don't you share it? Um, this relation to a part or a um, so two parts make up a whole, so you can take only one part to love with the other and vice versa. Great, so we know that there are, we know the relationships between part and whole, we know that those relationships between addition and subtraction that, have, uh, that help us find the difference, or the, the relationship between part and whole, what else someone can remember on this group? Um, we pretty much said the same thing, and also that they can be like, I mean, I guess in other words, like manipulated, like using the same parts in the same whole, there's different ways that you can show that. Using the same parts, yes. So let's talk. Ways to get there. Yeah. Yes. Let's, ways to get there. Let's, yeah. let's talk about what what does the what does the difference represent on a number? Yeah. Tell me more about that. So point A to point B can be either if you are going from a part to the whole, it will be going up. If you're fine, if you're going from the whole either to the part you don't know or jumping the part you know. Um, but um, you're going backwards from the way to point B to find that missing part. So the whole is like that tape diagram, the whole thing, and then we know a part of it, and so we jump into the other part. Yeah, and remember that another word that we've used with, uh, like we use when we talk about subtraction is the difference, right? Yeah. And on a number line, the difference between a number is the distance between two different numbers, right? So the difference between the whole and a part is the difference between those two numbers, which is also what you get if you subtract. In all three of these strategies, the two points that scholars are marking on the line is the whole and one of the parts. And in all three of these strategies, they're finding what is the distance between the whole and one of these parts. And that's what subtraction means, right? The distance between two numbers. Great. A lot of different strategies, a lot of like very close and confusing strategies. It's important that we understand this. Do you have a question? Yes. So, and then I'm going to get Yep. I know that we talked a lot about like talking about the most efficient way. Yep. Um, would those three different strategies of starting at the hole and starting at the part, and whatever, would one of those be considered most efficient? Great question. So I don't think uh, for efficiency, I don't think one of them necessarily is more efficient than the other. 
the goal here is that they choose a strategy that works for them. I, I, and I honestly, even in this, even in this lesson plan, they're listed in a specific order, um, which I don't know that one's necessarily more sophisticated than the other, but I think probably the first one's the most intuitive, like the one that just like matches the story the right. most, and then the other ones are ones that more rely on the relationship between part and law. But in all three of these, kind of the work is the same, but I don't know that one is more efficient. Right. The thing that's, that, let's, well, let's actually talk about this. When we think about using a number line strategy, where does the efficiency come in? What is the thing that we want kids to do efficiently when they're, when they're finding the difference on a number line? Make jumps of 10. Yeah, make jumps of 10 and jumps of 1. Right, that's where the efficiency comes in is what I'm using my understanding of numbers to do. Cool, okay. So, because this is a pretty meaty lesson, what I would like to do today is spend the majority of our time practicing charting the three strategies and eliciting the key points as well as like working together with scholars to demonstrate how to use these strategies, okay? If we take a look at, let's go ahead and take a look at um, the actual uh, VA. One thing I don't know that we made explicitly clear in our second grade group is just what are the um, criteria for success for charting strategies on the VA. So let's just quickly hit those. So when we chart strategies on the VA, what are the things that we do? We make sure that we kind of elicit the scholar response. We yeah. don't just give them the strategies. Great, yep, so we hunt and then we write down what scholars tell us. What else about those strategies? Would you like an example of it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, why would we do, why, why should we, and it's not even on here, and that's why I'm glad we mentioned it, why would we want to draw a picture for each show? Because a lot of kids can't read that. Yeah, they don't understand. Either can't read it, don't understand it, or they like the visual representation might be the best way for them to understand the strategies. Because what what is the purpose of charting the strategies, Karen? Um, for them to refer back to and like see the example of the different kinds of strategies. Exactly. If it wasn't one that they thought of. Yep. If they can't understand what's on your chart, you might as well not even make the chart. Right. The chart is for them. It's to show them that we are getting strategies from you, and you have an anchor that you can use throughout the throughout the. Um, the other part that we didn't mention that is less applicable on this one is that we're always charting in CPA order, right? In this one, all of these strategies are a picture representation and some abstract representation, so the order is less important, but one thing we should always do is we should always just chart in the same order that's listed on the back. And that's just doing that we can all stay on Okay, um, what I'd like to do is I would like for us to take, uh, let's just take three minutes I want us to start at where it says step three, solve with a number line. Let's take three minutes to read through the three different strategies that we're eliciting from scholars, to mark up anything that is important for us to remember, and then we're literally just gonna have three different folks jump up in practice eliciting those things from scholars. I see Meg, which I think is a really great idea. I see Meg drawing some pictures to represent those strategies. Let's all do that, just by the side of the strategies. Draw what that's gonna look like. So let me actually give us three or four minutes. Um, if you would like, Mary, I can just do that. I'll start with your names in the book.
So I actually I would kind of change my mind on things. I think it might be most effective to kind of go strategy by strategy since there's a lot of meat here. So um, let me quickly do this. Let me give you a minute with your partner. Let's just start with the first strategy that's given. I want you to compare your picture to see what's the same and what's different. Then we're gonna have a quick discussion about what does the picture need to look like? What are things that we need to be listening for? And then we'll jump up and we'll practice each section. So let's take one minute to spar with your partner. I see in work that I want to make sure we're all aligned up. The first is that uh, we're always starting our smaller number on the left, our large number on the right. So we're always thinking of our number line growing to the right. So the scholars, so we don't want to just be normed and aligned on that. Um, the second is we should have 88 on the right side of our number line as our whole. Uh, and then I'm seeing in every single person's work jumps back of 10 with labeled jumps, which is great. And then underneath each of the jumps, the kind of the number that that represents the number line. So I see like 78, 68, 58, 48, et cetera. And then I see, uh, I see jumps of one once we get to the tens. Great. Let's now talk about, as remember, when we're doing this strategy, uh, we want a scholar to explain, but in this specific lesson plan, understanding that this is the first time that they're doing, that they're doing subtraction on the number line, we're giving a, a kid a chance to explain, and we're saying, great, let's all try it, so that there's another opportunity for scholars to practice with you. So Narina, you were, you were mentioning this. Um, what part of the let's try it together and let's build this thing together do you think might be challenging for your scholars? Something from 88 to 78. Great. Understanding when the same space, you know, yep. gets smaller, yeah, so that, for that fluent understanding of how to subtract by tens at any number, and then Karen, I thought you had a really good idea just for some scaffolds that we can provide for scholars or resources. Um, I just, and I did this in a previous lesson, and it kind of turned some light bulbs on in some heads, but they all have that um, hundred chart and pointing to like 78. Let's count back by one, 10. Oh, that's 68. And then recognizing the pattern like 10 less, only my 10th place is changing, and I noticed that. Yeah, so the 100 charts are a great friend and a great tool to use that. And for scholars to understand that when I jump by 10, when I jump down by 10s, when I jump by 10s, I really just go up to the next row and, until they can start seeing the patterns among the numbers. Um, the last thing I want to ask was, after a, scholar, after a scholar shares out the strategy, in every single one of those, there's three questions that are asked. Can someone remind me what are the three questions that are asked every single time a scholar shares out? Yep. Yep. Let's decide, do those seem like the right questions, or what, if any, the, I, I have some feelings about those questions, I want to see what your guys thoughts are. What do you guys think? Um, what do you think? Like, yeah. yeah, I don't know if the what yes. do you think is necessarily a one that's going to like, is, is going to be a high level one. I mean, it'd be great. What do you think? Yes. I, yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm thinking. <laughs> so I, I'm, not, I'm not loving that one. Like, the reason you chart it is because you know that it's a strategy that's meaningful. Like, I don't think if a kid disagrees, what are you going to do with it? I don't really care about that one. Um, I do think the second one is an important one, right? So let's all star that second one to make sure we understand that we've got to ask that question of, like, why does that strategy work? And remember, and what, what are we looking for for that answer when we ask scholars to say what does the strategy work? What are we asking them to like? What are some words or expressions? Right? Right. That's exactly right. So each of these strategies, we're trying to talk about the relationship between part and whole. 
Yes, yes, Ashley. I have a question. I'm wondering if the first question is like, what do you think? Like, does the strategy work, but like a pull the room type of thing? That's and what I've been doing too. So. Yeah. You vote. And then, yeah. And then having someone explain it? I th yeah. I'm always tough on this one because like you just started it. If a kid says no, you're not going to be like, oh, let me just cross that out. <laughs> like, never mind. Sorry, thanks, Jeremiah. Like, I mean, I think it's great. I think it could be a good one for. Why don't you come up here, Jeremiah? You could be the teacher. I saw. I like, Jeremiah would say no. <laughs> I saw Meg lead this great discourse yesterday, and there was a little girl in the front who still was like, I disagree, and Meg Mikey was like, oh, okay, and he's just like, okay, we had a really persuasive discussion, so you're just wrong. Like, no. <laughs> I was not having it. <laughs> she was still like, you just don't disagree, Mikey? Yeah, okay, let's have him explain. Yeah. How about Mikey? What do you think? Okay, now you're wrong, Mikey. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, everyone thinks you're wrong, you're wrong. <laughs> so that's it, so great. I, you can say, like, what do we think? Thumbs up if you agree, so thumbs down if you disagree. At the end of the day, you're gonna end up asking that follow-up question anyway, which is why, why would we say that this strategy works? The last one is, uh, let's look at the answer for why will these jumps work. What are they trying to get at with that question? Helping them look at the place values. Yeah, so what's another question? I, I don't why know you, that. Why Why did you make those jumps? Yeah, it's also like, what makes sense about the strategy? Yeah. Well, this was like, why did you choose these values for your jumps? Yeah. Why did you start here? Why did you these yeah. values for these jumps? Why did you start here? Yeah, I, I'm almost thinking of like, there's the question of like, like how did I know how many jumps to make? Like to me, like that gets at the understanding of the place value, or why did they make jumps of tens and ones? Let's get to the idea of the efficiency. Like, what if we like, why did you make, why did you make four jumps of ten? That would be then, and being able to answer that would be like, there's four tens. I make four jumps of ten. I think the first question got more to the fact that we're starting at the eighty-eight and going backwards, and I thought the second question was more about, oh yeah, we've made jumps. Of Yeah, so the first one is about yeah. why, yeah, why does it work? And then the second one is about, yeah, exactly, the execution of it. Yeah. Like, why am I making a certain amount of jumps that I'm making? So let's align on what's the best question that we think we can get to get at the heart of, I'm not just making random jumps. I'm not just like putting jumps that I think I like. I'm putting jumps that match the number and that are efficient. What are the questions we're asking? say like why were we able to take jumps of different values and why did we choose those values? Okay. I think that gets to the, the efficiency part. Why did we make why did we make jumps of ten? So let's start with the first one. The first one is we want them to understand that they, their jumps match the value that they were subtracting, right? So what would we what's the question that can get at that? Again, I, I mean I guess it could be why would these jumps work? So you're trying to get them to talk about that they're jumping back the part they know? Yeah, I'm trying to get them to say, I jump back four jumps of 10 and yeah. five jumps of one because the number is 45. Okay, That's so what we're trying to get okay. them to get to. Okay, so first they need to know that starting at 88, go backwards, and then <coughs> why, why did we go back? Why did we do this? I, I think something along the lines of like, how, <clears throat> how do I know how many jumps to make? Yeah. Okay. Right? Like, how do I know how many jumps to make? And for them to understand, okay, you're looking at 45. And then I think to Meg's point, I think a follow up question of like, why did I make jumps of tens and ones? <clears throat> or you can ask a the, like a nonsense question. Why didn't I make jumps of seven? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, this is what we're gonna do now. We're gonna try to take this one at a time because I think there's so many. Um, May, I'm gonna have you go first, congratulations. Um, uh, I'm gonna have you just start at whatever part of that anchor chart. We're gonna see if we can fit like all three strategies on there, but we can write big since I know this is, we're, we're still mapping it out. Um, if you wanna carry up your script, you can, just so you can reference it. <laughs> So sorry, and, and then also to clap. So what I want you to do is I want you to jump into the script where we just turned and talk, and now you're about to call on the scholar who said, start at the start at the hole and jump back to the park. Okay, and you're gonna. So they already said that. Yeah. So well, so you're you're about to call on someone, and one of us is about to say that one of us is about to say, I started at the hole and I jumped back to the park that I knew. Okay. So scholars, how do we subtract 
88 minus 45 using our number line. Tell me the first step, where could I start, Justin? I put 88 on my number line and then I jumped back 45 because that was one of my parts. Good, so I'm sorry, can you go back? Why did we start with 88, Justin? We started with 88 because 88 was my whole. Good, 88 is my whole. And then you said you were jumping back 45. Why are you jumping back 45? I jumped back 45 because it says I'm taking away 45 and 45 is one of my parts. Good, it's one of my parts. All right, awesome. So here is what, so in order to do this and I, Am I doing the jumps with him, or am I asking them a question? Great question. This is why I think I want to jump in, because yeah. I want to get clear. Because normally we would chart the strategy as dollar share. However, in this lesson, because the first time that they're doing this, we're trying to give them opportunities to do it with us. Mm -hmm. So I think we have two options, right? We can either just have a kid describe, ask the questions, and then say, let's all try this strategy together, and then chart it. Or we could try to do like two different number lines using the strategy. What do you think? Well, uh, one thing that I have thought about that a little number line on the bottom of my whiteboard and to just be like, okay, what can I do back and count back? One, two, two, oh my gosh, 45 is a lot. I'm going to be counting forever. What's sure. a more efficient strategy I could use? And to see if some kid will say, okay, I can count back by 10 and think by one. I okay, get, do you want me to do that? Well, no, I, I, I think maybe we're answering two different questions. I love that strategy. I think the thing I'm trying to think about is, right, like if I'm talking and Meg charts it, right, if Meg charts it as I'm talking, that's gonna rob kids of the opportunity to say, scholars, let's use this strategy together. I'm starting at 88. How many jumps do I need to make? You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like the purpose here is that a kid voices what the strategy is and because kids have never done it before, I want to use this as an opportunity to do some guided practice with that strategy. So I actually, like in thinking about it, hearing the talk, what I would say is, I would do kind of exactly what you're doing. You would say, so you jump back 45. Guys, do we think that's gonna work? Okay, yeah, why would that work? And then it would work because it's one part. Uh, why would I jump back 40 or, no, I'm trying to think. What would I do next? Yeah, maybe what would I do next? And then I would say, let's all do it together. So I'm starting at 88. What should I do? You should jump back at 10. Okay. Does that so make I'm sense? starting at 88. I'm subtracting 45. How can I represent that subtracting problem using my number line starting at my whole 88? Let, let's start with, let's start with, I just described that. Let's start with, um, uh, I, I know I can start with 88 and then I can jump back 45 because 45 is one of my parts. And now why don't you ask, Ah, he said he's gonna start at this one, jump back his part. Do we think that's gonna work? And why would it work? Okay, so Justin said he's gonna start at this hole, which is 88, jump back his part, which is 45. Do we think that's gonna work? Awesome, I see mostly agrees. Can you tell me why, Katrina? Um, that works because if you take away one part, you get the other part. Awesome, yeah, we're gonna be left with the part that we don't know. So then, I'm, I, I feel like we're missing like, so now how do I transition to like me charting the tense? Yeah, I know. So I wonder, I almost wonder if that question that we added on, which was like the number of jumps, if that needs to go at the very end of the whole cycle. You know what I mean? Like I almost wonder if that needs to happen after the strategy gets demonstrated. Or should I, can I just ask like, how would I draw 45 jumps? Like turn on your Or how, or how would I, how how would I, I represent I going back 45? Yeah. Maybe that's how could I represent going back in my number line 45 jumps? So I see a partner and see if you can come up with like the most efficient way. Turn. And I don't even know if I would say jumps. I think I would just say, how can I represent going back 45 on my number line? Because you want them to pull up the idea of jumps. Okay. You know what I mean? How do I want to represent going back 45 using my number line, turning the top? Da, 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 Karen, da. how do you think I would represent going back 45? I'm going to make four jumps of 10 and five jumps of one. Okay, so first you said four jumps of 10. <laughs> and I would label yeah, those minus 10, minus 10, minus 10. Minus 10. <laughs> okay, so I have four jumps of 10. Four jumps up. 10. 10. Good, so I have four jumps of 10. Okay, let's, let's, just do minus, let's just do minus really quick. So like minus 10, minus 10, minus 10. So we never go back to that. Uh, okay, can you pause there before we move on from our jumps of 10? Why did you choose to do four jumps? Or I guess I could open that down. Everyone, yeah, why yeah, did yeah. she choose to do four jumps of 10? How did you figure out? Marina. Because there's four tens and forty-five. Well, there's four tens and forty-five. Okay, am I done yet? Yes or no? No. What do I need to do next, Katrina? You need to jump back your five ones. Four 
actually made a recommendation just ending with an arrow so you know that, that, that you're actually jumping back. So at the end of your line, just put a bow arrow. <laughs> awesome. And then and just, how does she know to jump back five more only jumps of one? Turn around and talk. There you go. Okay, then I see we made our grid jump to 45, but I still don't have an answer. What can I do for my last step to figure out what my answer is? Turn and talk, Justin. So when you were counting back, you need to know what your number was every time you counted back. Okay, so what would I write right here? Uh, 78. 78. Okay, and then what would I write here, Karen? Oh, okay, keep going, Katrina. Good, and at this part, just because it's the first time they're jumping back by tens, I would just ask someone, like, how do you know why it's 58, why it's 78? And they would be able to say 88 minus 10 yeah, or 78. So, okay, how does she get 78? Okay. 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 Okay, so here we have jumps of 10, but I'm still not out of my answer. How do I do label B minus 10? I had a call on minus 1. Minus 1, so what was this one? 47. 47, okay. 46. 45. 44. 43. Awesome. So how, which number represents my answer, Miller? 43. 43. There's someone down the key. Yeah, so now, now, yeah, I'm wondering, um, yeah, what do we think is a way to cap this, guys? What do you, like, is it writing, representing in a number sentence as well, like, just so that they can see all three of them got the same answer? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, probably, I, I might just write a number sentence under it to say, great, so, like, I might just stamp okay, it. Okay, so maybe I'd be like, so we know subtraction is whole minus part equals part, so, we started at our hole, which was 88. 88. Yes, our hole was 88. And then remember, we jumped backwards, which means we were subtracting. It means we were subtracting. And how many did we subtract, Justin? 45. 45. Good. And then we were left with our unknown part, which is what we landed at. Our part that we landed at was, Arena? 43. 43. Good. Yeah, we probably just mark it. Yep, there you go. Mark the 43 as an line. So when they start at their part and jump up to their hole, could we, should we write 45? Plus answer equals 88. That's how they think you were in number stories. That's what it's going to be like when we do our number stories. It's a great question. Sorry, what did you say? She was saying, yeah. Uh, when they jump from their park to their hall, should we write <coughs> 45 plus box equals 88? I think that's what the kids are doing in their head, right? I think we would need to make a connection with them to say, okay, the way they thought about this was they know that if I'm trying to find a missing part, I can also rewrite my number sentence to part plus my other part equals my whole. I don't know if we would write that here, though, because in the packet that I'm doing for this, at the top it's a... It's all represented yeah, all, subtraction. It's all, like, whole minus part. So what do you think? Say for the for the one where it's represented starting at the part, jump up the other part to find the hole. Or sorry, start at the part, jump up to the hole, count the part, representing it as whole minus part equals part, or part plus question mark equals whole. Because you're saying yeah, the way that it's represented in the, in the problem set today is only whole minus part equals part, and so we're trying to figure out the extent to which we should start. We should show them like, oh, use an addition sentence. So it seems like the game is not, aimed. it seems like the game, unless I'm looking at the wrong thing, it doesn't seem like that's in it today. Am I missing something? Well, it's just it's like, just like the representation of the strategy, right? Like if a scholar, if a, I think we're trying to figure out to what extent should the number sentence match specifically what they did? Because there's, because some kids, right? Like if they did, if they did, um, they might say, I'm going to start at 45. I'm going to make jumps until I get to 88 and then count what's what's there which like represent like representing that on the number line would be 45 plus mm, equals 88 so i think because it's subtraction you would want to stay to like starting the with whole the minus whole part. minus the okay. part so yeah. should we not even touch on that one 
No, we should. I think we just need to say like they the, the way they solved it was by counting on, but the, the equal still equals the equals the whole. Okay. Let's let's zoom ahead to what's your question? So my question is if we're only doing the jumps first and before we're counting down, then how would the second strategy work? Because then they wouldn't know when to stop. Great question. When they're, uh, you mean when they're starting at 88 and they're subtracting until they get to 43? Um, until they get to 45. Oh, so until they get to 45. Because then it's like, because if you jump and like do the counts with it, then it makes sense, but I feel like. I think you, that's what you have to do. I think on the second try, you have to do the counts with it. Does that make sense? So would we want to norm and do the counts with it for all three? I think. Do you mean, instead of labeling these as minus 10, doing. 10, 20, 30? No, I think she's no. saying, I think she would be like 88 minus 10, 78, minus 10, 60, minus 10, 50. I don't actually think it matters. I think I they think, can do either yeah, one. We, if we're trying to teach them to be more flexible in their thinking, yeah. they should be flexible enough to like. Yeah. I think the counting, the counting as you go is only applicable for that second strategy. Can I, okay. So then for this one, starting at 88, yeah. I can do minus 10. And then when, I'm sorry, when I, once I'm done doing the jumps, I can count them as 10, 20, 30, 40. Yes. Okay. So let's actually here, let's actually, Karen, why don't you jump up? Okay. And why don't we just go straight to, let's go straight to the part where we're saying, let's try this one together for the second strategy, okay? So a scholar just shared out, I am starting at 88 and I'm going to go until I get to 45. And then I'm gonna count my jumps. Starting 88, jump until we get to 45, right? Yep, okay. so you can write 88 on there if you want. So you said we're starting at 88 and we're going to jump till we get to 45. Why are we jumping till we get to 45, Justin? We're jumping to 45 because that's one of the parts that we already know. Nice. So, the missing part. so what are we trying to find? We're trying I'm to find. To that when I was trying that's to fine. That's good. I like that. No, I like that. Yeah, we're, we're. I was going to say we're trying to find the missing part, and we're trying to find how far from 88 to 45. Awesome. So you say we're starting at 88, and we're going to end at 45. Good. I like the strategy that she's using right now, just like marking it on right away. That was good. Turn and talk to your partner. How could we start at 88 and get to 45? What would you do, Meg? Um. I would draw jumps on the number line until I can get to 45. Great. How many jumps? What kinds of jumps would you make? Just train up. I would make jumps of 10 until those are too big, and then I would jump like one. Why would you start with making jumps of 10? Because it's faster. It's faster. How many jumps of 10 would you make? Awesome. You don't know. We're trying to find our missing part. Let's see. I'm going to start making jumps of 10 until I can get close. I think that works. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to make a jump of yeah. So I'm going to make a jump of ten. So what number am I at now? I'm going to make a jump of ten. What number am I at now? Everybody. Seventy-eight. <laughs> and I would label seventy-eight. The, label the jump as minus ten, and then draw a little arrow so they can see that they're doing it. Okay, jump. Cool. So there you go. Awesome. Should I keep making more jumps of ten? Mm -hmm. I agree. I'm going to keep making more jumps of ten. I made another jump of ten. Where am I at now? Everybody. Sixty-eight. I'm gonna keep going. And that's, I think one thing you can do right there is just keep, is keep asking, can I keep going? Okay. Can I keep going? Can I make another jump of 10? Because that's helping them just keep checking their reasonableness to be like, can I take away another 10? Okay. So, so at 68, you say, can I make another, can I take away another 10? Yeah. Okay, so can I take away another 10? Yes. Yes, awesome, thanks. Can I take away another 10? No. no. Why should I not take away another 10? Marina? Because if you take away another 10, you'll be at 38, and that's based on 45. Right. I need to make sure I stop where? At 45. At 45. What should I do now? Turn and talk to your partner. What should I do now, Justin? You need to start making jumps of one. Awesome. I'm going to make some jumps of one. Where would I be at now? 47. Where would I be at now? 46. 46. Let's see. I made another jump of one to get to 45. How can I figure out my missing part now that I've made all of my jumps? I would, and then I would just stamp that part right there that's really important that you like, 
yeah, like I would just say like now, okay, now I now at 46, I would say I take away one, what am I at? 45, what do I do now? You gotta okay. stop, like, because they need to understand that that's the number they're trying to get to. I'm at 46 and I took away another one. What do I do now? I'm at 45. Stop. Why should I stop? Good for you Because that's your, that's the part that you were trying to get to. You don't want to go any farther. Great, how can I find my missing part? So this is the part where I'm a little iffy on. Yep. Um, obviously, this is our missing part. How should we indicate that on our VA so that it makes sense for them to like, like for us, sure. it's easy for us to be like 10, 20, 30, 40, you know, whatever. Yep. But like, is there a way to label it to make it easier for them to visualize how we're adding that up? Do you think kids, would kids be able to keep it in their head or no? I, I, I don't think all of them. I think what we can maybe do is be like, okay, we know that this is our home, this is the part we know, this is what we don't know, let's count it, 10, 20, 30, 40, and make it four, 41, 42, uh, 43, and make it three. I think that works. I think um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good strategy. When so, I was my kids when we did addition jumping by tens and ones, I was like, this is like a stick, when we're counting our sticks, we're counting by tens. Okay. So, that also so we don't think we need any in, in crazy annotation trend. Yeah. It might just be let's count the tens first. I was just trying to figure out how to like. I think that's good. That. So let's do so that. Like, let's, let's yeah. This is the. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how did you just that. So. It, so I my, said a jump of ten is just like a stick of ten. How can I? Now how can I count my missing? I think I think I would just say let's start by counting our jumps of ten. If we're counting our jumps of 10, what should we count by? Or say like, so 10. these jumps represent our missing part. We need to count these jumps to find like the value of our missing part, right? Is that what like, you're trying to? Yeah. So like, let's count our jumps. Let's count, let's, let's find out our missing part all together. Let's start with counting our jumps of 10. When we count our jumps of 10, we count by 10. So get ready. 10, 10 20, 30, 40. 40. Let's stop there. How many 10s do we have? Four. Four 10s. How much is four 10s worth? 40. 40. I'm going to write down 40. We know we have 40 because we have four tenths. Let's count. Let's keep counting on or count how many ones. Now let's count our ones. Now let's count our ones. One, one two, two three. three. How many ones do we have? Three. Three ones. I'm going to do my 40 plus three to show how many I have all together. What is 40 plus three? 43. 43. What was my missing part? 43. 43. I'm going to circle my missing and then I would I would write my number sentence as well because I think for here for each one I would be like ah same answer different okay. strategies same answer is it? so but our number sentence would then be eighty eight minus we should just we should represent it the same three something like that Can well we should just represent it the same all the entire way so we're not we're not trying to get them to okay, write okay. number sentences we should just say so they in order for them to solve they did eighty eight minus forty five equals forty three they solved it a different way but they got the same missing part. Is it, is it stronger to like have them count on than to add the 40 and the 3? Because I thought one of the misconceptions our kids are in one in the package is where they say kids are not counting on from their tens with their ones. That's a good point. So instead of doing 40 plus 3, you could say I'm at 40, now I'm counting back, I'm counting 3 more, 41, 42, 43. Yeah, I mean, and both work, and I think this makes sense to them based on what we did <coughs> yesterday, but I just know that one of the misconceptions that they mention all the time is kids not counting on from their team. Oh yeah, my God. the one, yeah. well, that one was, um, that one's not always in this, this one. No, but I, that one was more of like, you have 40, yeah. and now you have three. Yeah. I'm just like, wondering which one is like the stronger move to make, to be like 40 plus three, or to have them count on 41 plus two, three. So the more sophisticated strategy is definitely counting on, because that's like what we want them to, I mean, yeah. So, so I could, instead of saying how many ones we have, I could say we're at 40. Yeah. Now I'm gonna count, count now I'm gonna count on by with ones. my ones. What's one more than 40? Oh, let me keep counting by ones. Now. Okay. Yeah. I wonder too, if you could even, well, my question was gonna be like, after you have it all charted up there, could you just say, how would I know how many jumps I've made between 88 and 45? Turn and tell your partner, how many jumps I made, because then they might be able to, yeah. to name that as well. I also am wondering if the way you see they got the same answer is not by writing an equation. I just like, wonder if they're going like, to be able to 
make the connection because like that equation when I look at the second number line like that, that looks like 88 minus 43 equals 45 right right and I, I wonder if that's confusing so I wonder if the way that you stamp that they got the same answer is just like you circle 43 wow I did it this way and I got 43 the second one wow I did it this way and I got 43 because I made 43 jumps I totally agree with that. I think the only thing that's confusing is in their problem set, they're having to write it. They have to write their representation in that way because that's what's in the format already. But the problem set, they just roll the number. But they always, no matter what, they're always going to end up, no matter what strategy, they're always going to end up doing whole Yeah, but they part. roll the number to fill this in here. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm confused. Yeah, I, I, maybe we're not talking about the same thing. But either way. This is the problem set that has the first number already, already the whole there. already there, yeah. correct? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I hear what you're saying, like it's like a step that we're doing to make it to do, you know, but it might not be like a necessary step, it might just be a confusing step. I think circling forty three is yeah, I think I think the biggest the big point here is that though in order to find the missing part we're using multiple strategies to get the same missing part. So I think that's totally fine. Okay guys, we are at time. This was fun. I had fun. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. No, like, this is like Good luck on that third show, kids. Cool. See, on next Wednesday, you don't get to have this much fun. I know, that's <laughs> right. We're going to talk about fun. So, okay, all right. Thanks, guys. Have a great rest Thank of your day. We appreciate it. Awesome.